in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed hallelujah and so the concept of covenant for the new creation believer must be understood in light of god's word because our knowledge of covenant if not balanced, will not help us to walk in the reality of sonship praise god so on one side we have people who are always thinking of covenant in terms of god i will do this for you and then you will do this for me how many of you have heard Christians do, say that? Lord, I will only serve you if you will do this. So our being covenant conscious, there must be a balance. Are you following me? So that you don't meet God and say, Lord, I will only serve you if you will do this for me. Hallelujah. And say, Lord, I'm giving you two weeks to give a deposit of your first proof that you are interested in this covenant. And after two weeks, you don't see anything. You say, Lord, that's your business. I'm not doing again. You must come to a point where you love him above and beyond anything if god never blesses me again i cannot leave him are you listening to me and that's the balance because you see the thing about a covenant if we if we look at ourselves as being in a covenant with god in the strict sense we are liars because in a covenant there's no mercy i hope you know that <laughs> in the strict sense of a covenant there's no mercy come on ask those in court those of you who have joined called before they tell you that the only way out is what death but how many times have we violated the laws and the principles of god how many times have we been punished for it the bible says his mercies are new every morning so yes we are in covenant with god because the nature of the kingdom is that there is partnership between the king and the citizens are you following me now that for every blessing that god gives us we have a role to play deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i commanded this day that the lord will set thee. so there is a condition are you following me now there is a condition for the blessing in that sense we are in a covenant so that if you do not hearken to the voice of the lord and you are not diligent to obey his ways you are not entitled to his blessings but there are many things that god will do to us not on account of our obedience and faithfulness but on account of his mercy his sovereignty and his fatherhood are you following me now i'll give you one more proof the bible makes us to understand a parable in scripture how that there were certain workers in a vineyard hallelujah and the bible makes us to understand that in the morning the husband man was moving and he saw a few people and he made an agreement another word a covenant with them for a denary are you following me now that at the end of the day he was going to pay them a denary is that correct the bible says the people got to work so they, they were not working because they loved the husband man they were working because they were conscious of their pay are you following me now the bible says as the day um proceeded he met some other people and he said why are you people idle they say no one will employ us he said come and walk they didn't make agreement are you following me up till the 11th hour the bible says he saw some other people and he called them they worked for only one hour but they worked for that one hour not expecting anything they worked for that one hour loving the husband man so if he had told them thank you god bless you they would just go are you following me now now watch this when it came to the reward he started with those who came to the farm because they were looking for are you following me now and then he gave them the denary that they agreed upon then the ones who said i will work for you not expecting anything i love you pay me by yourself he said now let me pay you 
because you did not give me any condition and he paid a man who worked in one hour the same salary that he gave a man who started in the morning and the, the other man was angry he said what kind of thing is this and then the husband man said is it unfair i mean we agreed with you many of us do not realize that when we when we just come to God simply because of the things we get from Him, we limit the potentials of God to bless us. Hallelujah. When God pays you, I tell you something, God's pay on your life for one day will cover your expenses for a lifetime. Hallelujah. That's why you see people in church. The moment they come into church, they are saying, ah, I'm working, I'm serious. They should be paying me. You see that happen all over Abuja. People can say, I'm not doing again. No, they must pay me. And then this church says, okay, 30,000. And the other one says, no, 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 100. And so they start bidding. Let me tell you something. As nice as that is, such kind of people. Of course, there is a level of commitment where it becomes a job and you have to pay because of the time. But when you just start serving God and you're saying money, 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 you will get what you are asking for. But you will never get more. Hallelujah. Because in a covenant, you do exactly as you have agreed. You don't do more. But in a love relationship, you are permitted to do more. In fact, that's what makes it a love relationship. I told God something. I said, Lord, I'm not serving you because of the blessings you give me. If you never give me any blessing in this life, I cannot stop serving you. Hallelujah. It's amazing how many people are pursuing God because of certain things. You will know when they do not get it. Everybody just retreats and says, I've tried. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Thank you, Lord. This was ad admonition by Moses to the people. Are you there? Let's start from... Um, verse 5 and thou shalt consider in thy heart that as a man chasteneth his sons so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him for the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land a land of brooks of water and fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of olive oil and honey. Listen. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig bronze. When thou hast eaten and thou art full. Listen. He said, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he had given thee. Beware, verse 11, that thou forget not the Lord thy God. How do you forget the Lord thy God? In not keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Verse 12, lest when thou hast eaten and art full, typical of rich people, and has built goodly houses and dwell therein. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold are multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. 14. Then thy heart shall be lifted up, and thou shalt what? Forget the Lord thy God, who brought forth, who brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein there were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought where there was no water who brought thee water out of the rock of flint 16 who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not that he may humble thee and that he may test thee to do thee good at thy later end 17 and thou shalt say in thy heart what my power and my might has gotten me this wealth. 18, let's read together. One to read. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he who giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to thy fathers, as it is this day. 
He said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Now, this was Moses speaking to them. They were on their way and he knew that it was inevitable. They were going to the land flowing with milk and honey. And so Moses was admonishing them. He was saying, when you get to that place, because of the grace that has come upon you, Israel, you are going to be prosperous. You're going to build houses. Your cattle will multiply. There is an ability of God that is upon you that will cause you to flourish and prosper. He said, but let it not be that when you have enjoyed all of these things, you say to yourself, my power and my might has gotten me this wealth. Hallelujah. The word power in the Hebrew is koach. K-O-A-C-H. It means a force, an ability, an energy that propels you to accomplish something. So when the Bible says the power to get wealth is an anointing, it's an ability of the spirit that causes you to flourish. The mission of the power to get wealth is to make your life become the garden of Eden. Hallelujah. And so when the power to prosper is upon you, then all of these scriptures that whatever you lay your hands to do will prosper. That the wealth of the wicked will find themselves to your place. And all of those prophetic blessings, they will only be a reality when you have the power to get wealth. I need you to understand that wealth is spiritual. Say after me, wealth is spiritual. So many people do not understand the spiritual dimension of wealth and prosperity. Herbalists know it. Politicians know it. Hallelujah. When you see someone suddenly get rich, what will you say? Your first suspicion is that this person has gone to a native doctor. So we realize that wealth is spiritual. If we miss out on the understanding that the wealth of a believer has a spiritual root, we will never truly prosper God's way. There is no wealthy person today who will tell you that he does not have a spiritual connection to his wealth. Be it God, be it Freemason, be it Satan directly. I follow me now. That's why when you begin to rise in wealth and prosperity, you get to a point where they begin to initiate you into all kinds of clubs and societies. And then you have to remain in those societies if you are to enjoy abundance. And so the Bible tells us that for the believer, there is something called the power to prosper. The ability, the anointing of the spirit that makes men prosperous. Listen, if you don't have that power to prosper, all of these laws we have taught, you will struggle whether in business, whether in life, you will suffer, you will struggle. The Bible says, except the Lord builds the house, the builders build in vain, except the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen watch in vain. The Bible says, it is vain to rise up in the morning, to sleep late at night. What's the reward? Only to eat the bread of sorrow. He said, but he giveth his beloved sleep. Hallelujah. And so you must realize that there is a spiritual dimension to prosperity. There is an ability that God gives you that causes you to prosper. That was the power that came upon our father Abraham as a result of the covenant that God enacted with him. And then it caused Abraham to flourish. Let's see Genesis 24 quickly. Thank you Lord Jesus. Hiya. Genesis 24, are you there? And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in how many things? In how many things? Is that in your Bible? And Abraham said to his eldest servant on his house that ruled over all that he had, put I pray thee thy hand under my tie was a Jewish way of swearing. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto thy son, this and that and that. And then, um, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's look at verse. Uh, verse 8. Or verse 10, verse 10. And the servant took 10 camels. Look at what he took just to go and look for a wife. And tell me whether that does not look like a prosperous man. 
ten camels and departed for all the goods of his master in his hand and he arose and went to Mesopotamia and the city of Nahum and um, where do we have again I want you to see all the the provisions that Abraham had okay verse 21 and the man wandering at her held his peace to learn whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not listen and it came to pass as the camels had finished drinking that the man took what kind of ring a golden ring and half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her wrist and ten shekel weights of gold look at that that is that's a provision that they sent him with just to go and look for a wife that's how wealthy and blessed Abraham, Abraham was the Bible makes us to understand that he was so prosperous are you following me now why because there was an ability upon him I hope you know that he had none of these things when he was an idol worshiper from Genesis 12 the same power was upon Isaac the ability to produce wealth and the Bible says when it was time for Isaac to release that blessing to his sons he said Jacob Esau make me venison that I will eat and that my soul will be delighted and I will speak the blessing because he was about to release that power to prosper and then by some act of uh, being crafty Jacob received that blessing question did Abraham give I mean did, did Isaac give Jacob Naira and Kobo did he give him Naira and Kobo he didn't give him anything but he left upon him the power to prosper and the Bible makes us to understand that a few years later Jacob came that power followed him to Laban's house are you following me when he stepped into Laban's house suddenly things began to work Laban had this to say he said I I come to terms with the fact that the Lord has prospered me for thy sake hallelujah when he began to turn Laban's animals that power to prosper caused the animals to increase and multiply are you following me now a time came Jacob had wives had cattle had all of these things who gave it to him the power to prosper are you following me now there is the supernatural ability of the spirit it's an anointing it's an enablement an energizing of the spirit that comes upon you that causes your life to look like the garden of Eden hallelujah and that's what we are exploring the Bible says thou shall remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee what power to prosper how many of you have seen two people in business and one person is flourishing not just in business in life you are working with a stranger and somebody walks up to that person and says the Lord just led me to sow 10,000 naira and while you're moving again another person just stops and says sorry I've been looking for you have you seen people like that let me tell you something it's called the power to prosper they never lay their hands on anything and it does not work they step into a company the company begins to flourish are you following me now you give them a job and a task to do they keep promoting them again and again it's called the power to prosper an ability that God gives you that distinguishes you and brings wealth and prosperity your direction you're just sitting down minding your business somebody will travel a great distance and come and meet you and say there is a business idea and I feel like sharing it with you let me tell you something it's what people like Bishop Oyedepo will call sweatless success I know that many of us are so used to hard work that when you hear the word sweatless I don't, I don't receive it hallelujah an ability of the spirit coming upon you and we cannot end this series if we do not bring ourselves to this understanding now the bible makes us to understand hear me according to romans chapter 4 and then galatians chapter 3 the bible says that christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law being made a cause for us for it is written Cost is everyone that hangeth on the tree to the end that the blessings of Abraham, the blessing, not as there, the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 
And so it was God's desire that the entire race of humanity will be partakers of this power to prosper. Are you following me now? But because the blessing was enacted in only one man, God left a, a promise and said, whoever becomes your child automatically steps into this blessing. Are you getting it now? And so the biological children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren were partakers of these blessings. That's why the nation of Israel today can never be poor. They are directly linked by blood to Abraham. There is the power to prosper upon them. There is no nation that can destroy them. Americans know this smart enough. That's why they never disrespect Israel. Because they understand that they are a covenant people. This is about a covenant that God has sworn. They understand their heritage. Are you following me now? Israel is a desert place. Yet they produce food. They produce more food than Nigeria. How in the world is that happening? And Isaac sowed in that same land. And received that same year an hundredfold. And he increased. He worked strong. He prospered. It doesn't just happen like that. Are you listening to me? There is a spiritual side. Your business will fail. You will suffer. The works of your hands will fail. You will beg and live from hand to mouth. Get a job without the power to prosper. You will be frustrated. Many of our parents and loved ones are struggling. Because they lack this ability of the spirit called the power to prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord wants us to be partakers of this. Now, I hope you understand that historically we are Gentiles. We are not Jews. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Jewish nation are the offsprings of Abraham. Are you from Israel? If you are not from Israel, then you are not a Jew. You are not of the Israel of God. That means that we are alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. That means as Gentiles, we are not partakers of this blessing. Are you following me now? So, God had a strategy. God said, Jesus Christ, come. Are you following me now? Jesus Christ came as that seed, that prophetic seed of Abraham. Are you following me now? He came through the lineage of Abraham so that he would open up doors for we the Gentiles to become partakers of this blessing. But the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Being made a cause for us, for it is written, Cause is every man that hangs upon the tree. Who was the person who hung upon the tree? Jesus Christ. To the end that what? That the blessing may also come upon the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Because the blessing was for Abraham and his seed. So the only condition for us to be partakers of that blessing is that what? We become the children of Abraham. Are you following me now? And for us to become the children of Abraham then we must do what Abraham did. So what did Abraham do? The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was credited for him as righteousness. So we like faithful Abraham, when we believe Christ who represents God, it is credited unto us as righteousness. And so we become born again. We become saved in Christ. Are you following me now? And then if we are Christ, then we are now qualified to be partakers of the blessings of Abraham. Hallelujah. And so we can now say we are the seed of Abraham according to Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Say after me, I am a partaker of the blessing of Abraham. Say one more time, I am a partaker. The Jews understood this. That was why in John chapter 8, when Jesus began to speak to them, they said, Abraham is our father. They never expected to be failures in life. Hallelujah. That's why they rated themselves as first class citizens. Can I tell you something? That was the reason why Paul was always contending with the Jews. Because the Jews did not believe that the Gentiles should just come into the faith life like that. They believed that they were superior people by circumcision. And so the Gentiles would have to undergo circumcision and become Jews then from Jews they will now become partakers of the divine life and then Paul was saying there is no difference for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God 
hallelujah then paul says there is neither male nor female neither greek nor hebrew but all of us are one in christ are you getting it now so the root of um our discussion tonight is founded upon abraham and the blessing that god released to him can i tell you something every massive explosion of kingdom wealth that you see today in any part of the world is a byproduct of the abrahamic that abrahamic anointing that god placed upon abraham that's what is spreading across are you listening to me please believe what i'm telling you and take it seriously the power to prosper has one mission to cause your life to become like the garden of eden that on all sides you will flourish you will prosper so every time the anointing comes it suddenly begins it it moves into motion bringing everything that you have to become the garden of eden the land of perfection so if that anointing comes upon your family what happens is it begins to change and shift things hallelujah a great man i respect bishop david oyedeko he saw this anointing working in the father of faith kenneth copeland that everything he would touch this man was just minding his business and the power to prosper led him six years before his prosperity he was driving a tallow picker he was so poor so broke but he began to search through scriptures and he collided with this power to prosper and suddenly he bought a piece of land and they found out that there was oil under I can imagine the person who sold that land to him, the person who never forgave himself to death. Say, what kind of foolish person is this? And Oedipo said he sat down and began to search diligently in fasting and prayer. After three days, when he found it, he shouted. He said, I can never be poor. Hallelujah. My own breakthrough started in 2007 when I had a, a vision and the audible voice of God. I had four words, massive kingdom wealth transfer. And the Lord began to speak to me about the coming wealth transfer. And I got angry in my spirit. I said, God, there's got to be something. This struggle cannot be it. There is something called the power to prosper. I began to search diligently from the word of God and to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise and one day by the spirit of god i collided with a revelation that has changed my life let me tell you something the power to prosper has no respect for your gender it has no respect for your background are you following me now it has no respect for your background so how do we access this power to prosper i want to go straight to the point hallelujah if you must get the blessing that abraham got you must do what he did follow me genesis this is where my teaching really starts oh god i pray that the word will sink in our hearts there are so many people that like results without understanding the process that leads to the result we like results when you see a prosperous man you're wow this guy is great but we must understand that the ways of god is such that when you master the process you can reproduce the results whenever you are not able to reproduce a result then you have not known the ways if a man desires mastery yet is he not crowned until he strives lawfully hallelujah the bible makes us to understand that god gave abraham isaac after waiting so long and in genesis chapter 22 follow me the bible says and it came to pass after these things verse one that god did what test abraham god did test abraham god did test abraham hallelujah what was god looking for God knew that he was going to enact a covenant with this man and he was going to bring wealth and abundance. Hear me friends, can I tell you something? The power to prosper doesn't just come by kneeling down and dropping seeds. You must do what Abraham did, otherwise you will never have the power to prosper. 
Are you following me now? No matter how many times and how many days you fast and pray and roll on the floor, what happened to Abraham must happen to you. Otherwise, you will never prosper God's way. You can prosper in different ways, but not the Abrahamic prosperity. Hallelujah. Please let me have someone. Anybody? Hallelujah. Look up, please. Abraham had Isaac. Isaac represented his entire value. He represented everything he could live and die for. I hope you realize that Abraham waited so long to get Isaac. And then in Genesis 22, God begins the test that will open up the doors for unlimited wealth and prosperity. Anybody who has not passed through this process and is smiling about wealth should not smile quickly. Because if it is God's way, the test will come. Follow me. God said, Abraham, I know I gave you this son. Take now thy son, thy only son, whom thou lovest, and offer him. Offer him as a burnt offering upon a mount that I will show you. That's the first test. What was God looking for? Abraham, I mean Isaac's blood? No, no. Hallelujah. He was bringing Abraham to a point where Isaac and any other thing will not take the place of the Lord. Are you following me now? These are the conditions if you want to experience wealth unlimited from the Lord. There will come that test of the position of God in your life. It's amazing how many people believe that in the face of prosperity they will still love God and stand not until you are trained by the spirit let me tell you something you have no right to speak over when you see people prosperous and backsliding don't be too quick to criticize them the proof of obedience is when you have the opportunity to disobey until the opportunity is given you can that's why there were two trees in eden so that man can choose if there were only one tree satan will accuse god and say you did not give man options and so there were two trees. I set before you blessing and cursing. I set before you life and death. But here is my advice. Choose life that you may live. Are you getting blessed? And the Bible says, Abraham took Isaac. He took Isaac. Upon that mount. Defying what people will say. Abraham was by that act of faith saying, Lord, I value you more than this Isaac. I value you more than all of these things. A point will never come where Isaac will take your place in my life. And this was the exact word that Moses was giving the nation of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 8. He said, do you realize that before this blessing came, your fathers were tested? Are you following me now? The blessing came on account of the fact that they were found faithful. When Abraham, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 4, the thoughts of Abraham, that Abraham had concluded that Isaac was going to die and that he counted God faithful to raise him back from the dead. And when God saw that Abraham had what we call obedience unto death, he said, I swear that in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply there are so many people who want the wealth of God. We want abundance. We want all of these things. The first thing God will need to capture is your heart. Are you listening to me? God must bring your heart to a place where you truly die in Him. Such that He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Where if they drop one billion naira today, it will not move you. Where your wealth is a ministry channeling the resources of heaven for the advancement of God's kingdom until you pass that test you will not get the power to prosper I'm, are you getting blessed tonight because many times when we teach about the power to prosper we just feel it's just an impartation received by faith and start running and there are so many people who have proven that they truly do not love God they only love their stomachs and so they heard that this ministry when you come you can be blessed when they become directors, they forget. And then he was admonishing them. He said, let it not come to pass that when you have built houses,
houses unoccupied. When you now begin to fly arrow, <laughs> no more if it's in a cheap transport. When you begin to fly around and then today you are in Ukraine, tomorrow you are this. Do you know something that you can come to a point where money can replace God? Because you will not see the need of God again. Are you following me now? There are people that can be so fortified with their finances. I hope you know that that's why Solomon backslided. Many of you who desire the wealth of Solomon, calm down until you read the book of Ecclesiastes. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, he said, I made myself this, I made myself. He said, there's nothing that my eyes saw and desired that I did not go for. He was so rich and wealthy. And the Bible says towards the end of his life, he began to bow to foreign gods because the Egyptian women made him do so. He had enough money to marry. It's not in Nigeria right now that marriage is like a building project. You have to plan by faith, pray, lay the foundation and rest, lift it up to Linton level and rest. You do the first introduction, then you rest, breathe in and out. First traditional, breathe in and out. Say, God, we'll finish this. Second. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many people need God today. I tell you the truth is because of their stomach. They think they love God because of who he is. You get so blessed that you cannot lie down again. When you were buying 1,000 Naira suit, you know where I'm, I'm talking about. You just buy it and the tailor will help you to arrange it. But now that you are buying a Gucci or a Versace, you can't lie down again. Hallelujah. It's amazing how our heart can turn. Now you're driving the Lexus Jeep. And so God said, this is it. We must make sure you pass this test. Your heart will be thoroughly furnished by God until God finds that there is no guile in you. And then God will say, there is no limit to what I can give you. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? It costed God only seven days to make the heavens and the earth. It will not cost him more than one day to change your life. All the cry and cry that people cry. Oh God, when will breakthrough come? I was told about a woman who loved God. She had been serving God diligently. And one night she slept and she had a vision of an, something about optics. A formula that she got up, drew it and took it to a hospital. She just went casually. Remember we watched the documentary together? And when she went to the hospital... The consultants looked at her and they, they said, we have been trying to discover this for years. And they called her and she was standing. She thought they would just say, thank you, go away. They met her and they said, madam, give us an opportunity to mass produce this. The first, the advance we are giving you is $20 million right there. The woman could not believe it. That's what happens when you pass the test. You come to that point where nobody and nothing isn't it amazing when a man's house catches fire or when a, when someone's car catches fire the person faints for what you must come to a point where you realize that the god who gave you before can give you again is it amazing how god gives us something and demands it back and then we refuse we are like little children you give a little child something you say give me back you refuse while you have more to give there was a day you did not have an account. Now God gave you an account with little 10,000 and God makes a demand of it. Let me tell you how it happened to me. I was minding my own business, trusting God for prosperity, thinking a business idea will come upon me, pastor. And while I was minding my business, the Lord asked me to sow everything that I had. I said, come on God, you can't do this to me. How, how, how many things do I have? I will never forget Christ Embassy Prosperity Convention 2007. I woke up by 3 a.m. I packed everything plus the suit I bought for my ministration and my rechargeable lantern. I zipped everything in my box. I called it my Isaac. I knelt down for three hours stretch praying in tongues on it. I said, Lord, I make a vow to you today that there is nothing that I cannot lay aside for you, including my life. 
God said, that's it. That's all I want. That you come to this position where there is nothing. There is nothing. There is no one who compares with you. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping you Lord. and I prayed that morning I said Lord it's not about my gifts take my heart I cried and I prayed I said Lord I, I cannot live my life struggling from hand to mouth I have seen too many people with it Lord I'm ready to step into your blessings are you following me now and the next day I dressed up for church and I carried the bag. Pastor, I started walking and I was praying in tongues, going to church. When I got to church, it was, it was full and then we we're outside. I sat down outside and many people were looking at me. You know what to see a young man standing? You're supposed to be looking in case a lady is looking at you. I was too serious for my destiny that morning. I said, things must change. You know, sometimes we get distracted over trivial issues. I said my destiny must change I sat down with that bag I was I was just waiting for the time when they would say bring this gift as soon as they said it you know plenty of people were giving many people were giving out of their abundance giving plots of land what hundred million what I had was worth my life that was my alabaster box I carried it gladly and I tell you the truth it wasn't a very pleasant box so don't you think it was nice and rosy it's something you'll be ashamed of but I carried it and I was praying in tongues and hear me I put my heart on that seed and I said Lord take my heart I said Lord if there is anything you will give me in my life that I cannot give back to you let it not come in the first place are you following me now you want the blessing that Abraham had you must pass the test that he passed and I took that bag people were looking at me some were laughing and I went in front the altar it wasn't just at the back I said Osha please help me no I took it there and then I laid it it pained me because that was my all when you hear me write songs like king of my life you are my all and i live for you alone that's not a special number it's an expression of the sincerity of my heart i cannot tell you i was laughing when i was doing it for i will be a liar if you are laughing to drop your seed that's ishmael that's not isaac the day you are going to drop isaac you will know this is isaac hallelujah and when I dropped it, I went outside. And people were looking at me. When I went back, I sat down. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, son, from this day, you have entered wealth. That's exactly what God told me. Did money fall from heaven? No. I didn't even understand the gravity of that blessing. I didn't know it was called the power to get wealth a supernatural ability suddenly i started having dreams pastor kenneth copeland would lay hands on me in dreams and release the anointing i had several dreams i had one dream when bishop david oyedeko asked me to drop every seed that i had and when i dropped it he was looking at me he said no i should check there's still something left i brought out the whole wallet and i dropped it then he brought out a carton full of mint brand i mean notes and then he looked at me i was lying down he was just smiling at me and then a voice spoke he said the keys of prosperity that i gave bishop Oyedeko, i give it to you i'm telling you friends there is something called the power to prosper it will not just come by fasting and praying when your heart is far he said they draw nigh to me with their mouth but their hearts are far away from me there is nothing i tell you there is no amount that will move my heart away no amount there's no amount of fame there's no amount of lifting i don't care what it is there's nothing i have today that i cannot give god there is nothing let your mind grow wild nothing until you get to that point 
every time I trust God for increase I'm telling you I'm thinking about the house of God Lord bring increase let's get better sound equipment I follow me now the house of God must be your priority many of us think about ourselves whose God is their belly David said I want to build a house for you Lord I want to build a house for you many of us want to build our empires for ourselves you will not get the power to prosper that way you must have a passion towards the things of the kingdom are you following me now you must have a passion a heart for the things of God that anything that has to do with the kingdom you are a willing giver you are willing to invest your life and your all you will touch a part of God that God will swear and say in blessing I will bless you hallelujah God has been replaced by many things in our hearts jobs the quest for sustenance and this rat race for money 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 many of our parents have been looking for money from the days of their youth till now they've not found it doesn't it tell you that only God gives it he said thou shall remember the Lord thy God we have a generation of people who have replaced the Holy Spirit in church they now want to be the Holy Spirit to the pastor because they sold one million naira. They say, um, can you preach about, uh, about wickedness? And you just know that they have a personal problem. Hallelujah. For many people, their wealth is an opportunity for them to marry more wives, go around and mess, up, mess people up and do all kinds of things to promote Satan those in the world system understand that the purpose of their wealth is to promote the kingdom of darkness let me ask you a question do you really have a heart for God do you have a heart for his kingdom otherwise the wealth that God brings the Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them and so you must come to a point where you must say Lord I'm giving you my heart there is nothing and there are many of us who have enemies right now because somebody was doing you 1,000 error and when you needed it most he didn't give you I said well, God will not make me forgive this person you really think God will give you the power to prosper you're going to kill God <laughs> hallelujah I swear I will not forgive this person our God is saying this person is owing you 30,000 naira. let it go he said ah, I bind that devil that is bringing that word hallelujah are you following me now you must come to a place where you pass that test where the material things that God gives see let me tell you something money can corrupt oh. are you listening to me <laughs> money can corrupt brothers and sisters a point will come you will be so rich look at what politicians do they just put money under their carpet and walk on it lie down on it and say like the rich fool my soul find rest according to God's principles money is not supposed to be kept stagnant it's supposed to be moving when you keep money stagnant you are called a rich fool so God trains us and brings us to that point where you realize that everything God gives you, you are to benefit from it and the kingdom of God is to benefit from it. When you become a kingdom advancer, then at that point you position yourself to receive the power to prosper. No matter how many days and months you fast and pray and roll on the floor, if God has not gotten your heart, you will not be prosperous. But happy are you when you come to that point where nothing in the world nothing in the world can take his place not fame not power not influence not charisma not naira and kobo that you sit in the lexus jeep and you say thou jeep let me tell you christ is above you at any point he makes demands you will go hallelujah god gives you hundred thousand and you look at the tithe, 10,000. Ah, God. 
God, I promise to give you the tithe in the next amount. I really, I desperately need to do something. You were begging for money. You didn't have it. Now it came and you cannot honor God. Lord, I honor you. Whatever it is that I cannot give you, let it not come. Let it not come. God, give me this business. God gives you this business and God cannot have your time again. No, It's no time for the things of the kingdom again. Hallelujah. No time for fellowship with the Spirit. Lord, prosper me. And now you are prospering. No time to stay in the presence of God. I told God, I said, nothing will take away my quest for intimacy with you. Are you getting blessed tonight? Let me tell you, I'm teaching you the kingdom's way of accessing the power to prosper. Do you realize that your business belongs to him? Do, re, do you realize that the ideas belong to him? Do you realize that your being in school was on account of his grace? What do you have that you gave yourself? Why can you not give it back? Hallelujah. When you come to that point where you can take your Isaac at the demand of God, proving to him that he is above all. Above all above all husbands and wives have fought at home because 5,000 was missing from a salary that was kept and then the man just came back from an anointing service for prosperity you will never get blessed God's way at least not from my Bible that I know other people sit down with their greed and they want to get blessed so that they can prove a point and then they find a man of God that this grace is operating on that meal that I want to tap into and while they are saying it their heart say God give me this thing and see what will happen Many of us want to bring our parents to a point where they bow to us and we revenge from the things that we suffered growing up and say, Lord, give me this power to prosper and see how I'll fall. No, 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 no. I, the Lord, test the heart. I judge the conscience. God will test your heart until he finds only himself in your heart. When he finds any other thing aside from him, let me show you a scripture that tells you that God is a jealous God. Oh, I sense the anointing of the spirit in this place I'm telling you this is a journey that will lead many of us into true prosperity the kind of prosperity that you will not shake when they say there is recession the reason why many people are afraid of recession is because they are thinking of their business they are not thinking about the one who gives wealth they are saying ah my business my this my that my job my this ah. take everything I have today leave me with the power to prosper it will come back that's why a believer can never be bankrupt you steal money from a believer you have only cheated yourself because you have a cause for it but the person the prosperity upon him will bring it back deuteronomy 6 verse 10 and it shall be when the lord thy god shall have brought thee into the land which he swore unto thy fathers abraham to Isaac and to Jacob to give thee great and goodly cities which thou build not listen to what the power to prosper can do for you it can give you houses that you did not build Deuteronomy 6 verse 10 this is an order of wealth and prosperity that you walk into a level of inheritance that you cannot even account for and houses full of good things which thou fearless not and wells deep that thou diggest not are you reading it is it in your bible these are the blessings that these are the things that can begin to follow you when the power to prosper i told you that the power to prosper has the job of making your life become like the garden of eden it will not stop working until your life looks exactly like eden perfection 12 then beware okay let's read verse 7 and wells dig which thou diggest not vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not when thou shalt have eaten and be full he said then beware are you listening again for every time god announces the blessings he keeps telling them beware beware that means these are tendencies that can happen when god wants you about a thing take it seriously lest thou forget the lord who brought thee forth from the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. 13. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him 
and shall swear by his name he said ye shall know ye shall not go after other gods this is what god doesn't want mammon is a god of the gods of the people who are around about you he said for the lord thy god is a jealous god among you lest the anger of the lord thy god be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth god wants to give you things that you have not even worked for supernatural blessings that you will step in day and night ask manasseh he can tell you sometimes on the street how many of you have had that happen you go to bab you will not even pay for it you enter car to town you will not even everything is is the blessing the the anointing the power to prosper causing your life to become like the garden of Eden. the first manifestation of this blessing happened in my life when someone called me by 6 10 i will never forget 6 10 in the morning he called my number, shaking under the anointing and said, is this Joshua Selman? I said, yes. He said, please send me your account details. I said, sorry, I don't do that. You know, arm robbers and all of that. I don't do that. Who is that? He said, that's not the issue. I'm under instruction. Send me your account details. And from that day till today, I tell you the truth. People send me hundreds of thousands that I don't even know someone did a transfer a fearful transfer to my account and the account name was me M-E are you listening to me a time came I think in 2008 where my account was hacked and some sizable amount was taken from it when we went to the bank and then we complained through ATM or some I don't know how they did it they withdrew everything and left just 1,000 in my account. You can imagine. We went to the bank and when they checked, they found out that the robbery was done from Portacot. And my ATM was here with me and everything. When they took everything, my bank, my, the bank said I should take all my friends, they would go and swear and sign affidavit and do this police statement and then we are going to get a lawyer. I looked at them, I said, people, forget it. They looked and said, what are you saying? And they said, forget it. Till today, there are some of the bank officials that every time I enter, they look at me. They, sometimes they look and say, is this person on drugs or what is he doing? You know, there's a level of possessiveness you have towards the things of the world. Because you feel it's your sweat. I went back and I said, Lord, I love you. There is nothing that I have that does not come. If I die today, that thing will still be in the account there. That's the mindset you must have. And true to it, God did something to me. Hallelujah. When God finds your heart, there's nothing that he will not give you. I sleep in the night. You can ask him, I share some of these dreams. I sleep in the night and angels walk to me and show me ideas and show me things. Are you following me? Business ideas, the wisdom of the spirit communicated unto me as I sleep in the night. I see like a television in my sleep and my dreams and they show me certain things and I get up and do exactly as I have seen. There is something called the power to prosper. This is my message tonight. But God must have your heart. I said I'll try this thing to see if it works. My younger sister is there, you can ask her. When my mother was about to start a little poultry that she had, I prayed on it, her poultry. And I said, Lord, this is my mother. I release the power to prosper. Today, my mother is flourishing from the poultry. It will work anywhere. Are you listening to me? I traveled to South Africa. And while I was in South Africa, the people did not even, they looked at me like this. They invited me over for lunch. And while I was having lunch, one of the people, they packaged some sizable amount and then they package a phone a brand new phone and the white people brought it they said joshua i do not know what what is it about your life there's something that attracts us they dropped all the gift there and i was laughing it's called the power to prosper a fearful order of grace that you cannot even explain yourself hallelujah it's the power to prosper 
when we began purchasing some of these equipments the person who distributes it just fell in love with us and said you can come and be taking some of these things before you pay for it say no we want to pay for everything you see people being compelled to do certain things the moment you step in you are exempted is the power to prosper doors begin to open by themselves because God has everywhere you go God knows that he's not afraid of your tendencies because he has your heart my son give me your heart hallelujah and one day somebody called me to his office he just called me and looked at me he said I don't know what it is about your life but can you pray for me to partake of this anointing to prosper I told him there is nothing I have that does not come from God and there he brought out 0.3 million and dropped and said take my mind I said Lord what for see you come to a point in your life where you cannot reverse the process again it's easier for you to keep prospering than to go back to poverty that's what happens when God has your heart there is no day no day that I do not return back to my house with a gift or a blessing from somebody. Ah, Chevy, you are in ministry. Forget all that. There all this. Me. Was I born with, with mic on my hand? Hallelujah. This grace, it will work for you. It will work for you. Somebody who just walks and buys a gift and brings. Someone just ah, the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. You're sitting quietly. Somebody will start a company and make you one of the board of directors. Your work is just to supervise that they are, they are doing the right thing. Fearful blessings. Let me tell you something. Stop chasing money. Chase after God. The secret to poverty is to chase money. You are looking for... There are people, they call it hustling. I must make it to this money. My hand must touch it. I'm I also say my you are doing it. I look at continue. That's a curse. That's a demonic statement. Hallelujah. We keep chasing money when he says, Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And he said, For the Gentiles run after these things. And your father knows. You think he doesn't know you need money? He knows you need school fees. He knows you need all these things. But I'm telling you, when God has your heart, when God has your heart, there's nothing you will not get. Hallelujah. Wouldn't you like to step into that level of life? Where everywhere you go, you become like the ark that was in Obededom's house. Because there is something you have. With all humility, I never enter a place. Every time people invite me to their houses just to come and pray or share fellowship with them, I am happy, not in arrogance, but I know that I am leaving the power to... It's, it's like a dew rubbing off on you. Somebody, you just come and buy juice in someone's shop and you leave and they begin to sell. See, business people do not know this. When they know, they will stop struggling. You can cry, print posters, do everything and say, come, buy. I have it, Jebugari. Buy. Nobody will buy it. But when the power to prosper comes, you will start doing wholesale. Wholesale, not retail again. Wholesale. How that we will realize that the secret to our prosperity is founded upon the word. Go for God's word. Let your heart pant after him. Are you, are you following me now? Stop thinking business. Think kingdom. Think about God and his ways. Oh God that you will empower me. That I will donate a boss. Oh God that you will empower me. That I will make the life of your servants comfortable. Oh God bless me. That I will be, I will be a blessing. The, off, the, the offering, offering bags that you see was a donation by the treasurer it was some amount that she wanted to use to do something and she met me i know she will beat me up for telling you this hallelujah and she said see 
I've been looking for ways to be a blessing and I've been asking God to bless me and with this that I have I'm committing it to the house of God and I can tell you firsthand that this lady is entering levels of blessings today that is even getting her parents scared do you realize that if you are prosperous today many of us can end some things and even reconcile our families because money issue has caused Tom and Jerry um, um, and, and all kinds of things to happen in our families but tonight I'm teaching you that the way to access the power to get wealth is number one God must have your heart number two quickly you must be able to one way now this this you don't choose one they are following themselves in that order are you following me now so God has your heart number two God will connect you to the careers of this anointing God will connect you to the careers of this anointing God will connect this is about transfer prophetic transfer God will connect you to the careers of it whether through their tapes through their DVDs through visions are you following me now God will cause you to lock yourself somewhere. I told you that I saw Kenneth Copeland, Oyedeko, um, Sondia Delaja, several people that carry these blessings. They also got it from their fathers of faith. And then they, by impartation, oh, he said, such as I have, give I unto you. Let me tell you something very interesting. I contacted the spirit of prayer when I listen to, you may not know this, but let me tell you, Pastor Pete. The senior pastor of House on the Rock, I was listening to a prayer retreat tape in Abuja. Same thing. A prayer retreat tape. It was a hot prayer retreat. And while he was preaching and they were praying, I locked myself. I said, God, the spirit of prayer must leap from this man and enter my life hallelujah and then i found that scripture that says quicken us oh god and we will call upon your name quicken us energize us and we will call upon your name you need to locate see sometimes you don't appreciate don't just look at people try to study the anointing that is upon them that may be the solution to your challenge the prophet always passed the house of the Shunammite woman. I, have, you, have you read that in the Bible? And suddenly she perceived that he was a career. Because prophets don't only reveal the future. An ability is given to them. They can create one by their utterance. And she said, I perceive this is a holy man of God. And she did all she could do to trap him in her house. And as a result, look at how he said it casually. He said, what do we do for this woman? That had been their prayer request. Do you realize that your prayer request is at the beck and call of somebody's anointing? Something you have been praying for for years. There are vessels that carry the anointing that will answer to it. Are you getting me? That you will be crying and languishing over a thing. And God will, see, God will just, you will meander yourself into one meeting. And just see somebody stay. Little will you know that these are the agents that carry this prophetic unction and you will just speak that's the reason why when you che check Bishop Oedeko for instance I love him so much people don't know why he, when he's preaching you may not see people falling under the anointing like this but people that man has found some keys and every time he's speaking I just say Lord let something leave this man I desire the presence of God that Benny King carried so much every time i watch him and cry and say god you've got to give me this and by prophetic impartation prophetic impartation so you must desire some things and can i tell you something one of the things that god gave us one of our visions is to reveal the wealth of the kingdom and to finance God's end time agenda I say it here without fear or favor there is the power to prosper upon this ministry with all humility look at it by yourself do you not see that the, the works that are done here are not the works of mere men how many months salary can bring the level of excellence and blessings that God has brought 
and this is only the beginning God has begun to speak to me about next year I say dress up for there shall be a performance hallelujah and it's our desire to end this series by bringing you to this point and releasing this power to prosper for as many of you who can listen it can end the struggles in your families many of you are about to go home would it be why God kept you to carry this anointing and take home and say an end comes to it that as you are knocking your gate you are saying Lord let the gates be open suddenly those owing your parents begin to bring for the money the promotion that was due comes because of the power to prosper how many of you believe in what I'm sharing tonight because we are going to pray whenever I find myself struggling in an area I begin to search for agents that have the anointing that can get me out of that trouble and I humble myself whether it's through my seed through my prayer through prophetic impartation let me share with you something that will shock you God began to speak to me about several things and when God shared with me the revelation of Anakazo we began to experience increase and lifting are you following me now we began to experience increase and lifting when koinonia started the lord gave me an instruction the lord told me something he said when we had started and people you know it was it was really getting much and god told me that you have not seen anything yet i want you to tap into an anointing and god told me to go to canaan land i i don't share this i only shared it at the at the the the, the minister's retreat but let me share it here first thing in the morning 5 a.m in the morning remember i just came and i walked in i told them guys the lord asked me from the room he said go out i want to talk with you and i went out and the lord told me now today i want you to leave for lagos this morning hallelujah i just packed up my things i was so excited every time god gives fearful instructions that cost me i begin to rejoice because i have learned by experience that god is not my enemy hallelujah every time I look forward to times when God will give me fearful instructions because I know that there are times of blessings and God commanded me to take a seed and to take it to Canaan land not to drop it in any living faith branches say take it he said I want you to sow this seed for supernatural increase and expansion I said fine we boarded the first the first plane that could get me when I, I was so excited I was I, I chartered a car from the airport to Canaan land I told the guy to wait for me there I got in many of you do not know so that you do not think that we went to a harbor list hallelujah agents who are carriers of the blessings that you require and when I, I got there you know I was able to drop the seed and all of these things then I was prayed for and when that happened I came out and I was about to enter the car the Lord said no come out and I came out he said kneel down I knelt down. He said, lay your hands on that ground. He says, son, it becomes impossible for you not to face increase and expansion. And I came back quietly to Zaria and the anointing began to speak. He's still speaking today in a fearful way and we have not seen anything. I want you to know that the anointing can be transferred. Hallelujah. But it comes on the wings of sacrifice. A certain time the Lord asked me to empty my account and he just waited until a deposit was made he said I should empty it I said Lord I like I love you because you know how to ensure that my heart is up to date and I gladly sent the seed three hours later someone sent about three times the amount to my account God is my witness I will not stand before God's altar and tell you lies people struggle over nothing not realizing that the kingdom of God works with definite principles begin to respect the careers of the things that you desire and tonight we want to release this power to prosper the power to prosper an anointing an ability that will help you business or no business there is a place for business we have shared all of those things but this will connect you in dimensions that will make you afraid please believe it please believe it
Oh, believe it. Sense the presence of God strong in this place. Doors that will be opened for you out of their own volition. Let me read one last scripture. Isaiah 60. Aaron, you can sit down. God bless you, sir. Verse 3. And the nations shall come to thy light. And the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Verse 4. Lift up thy eyes right round about and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to thee. Are you seeing? Thy sons shall come from far. And thy daughters shall be nursed by thy side. Verse 5. Let's read it together. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come to thee. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Do not forget him. Never forget him. Acknowledge him as the owner and Lord of your wealth. Get to a point where there is nothing that can take his place in your life. When you get to that point, you will truly, truly receive a blessing from the Lord. Two prayer points and we are done tonight. Rise up on your feet. Go ahead and begin to bless God in the spirit. Listen, let your heart be open. God wants to do something powerful that can change your life. Respect prophetic meetings like this. With everything, with everything, we shout for your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your One more time. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. Take it in the 
Mosha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, there is nothing you demand of me that I shouldn't be able to give. Grace to be able to give you every and anything, including my finances. Come on, pray. Go ahead and pray. Grace, you are able. I stop doubting you. You are not my enemy. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They say at God. They are thoughts of good. They are thoughts of good. They God is not your enemy. God is not your enemy. God is not your enemy. With greed. With selfishness. God is not your enemy. God is not your enemy. He loved. I wish I were your enemy. Before I pray for you I'd like you to pray this prayer and say Lord as this anointing is released enough is enough see if you are not dissatisfied you will never step into this blessing you've got to be angry for once for yourself and for your family say Lord I'm tired of struggling tired of watching my father my mother and my loved ones struggle not your desire say Lord I'm tired of watching my business fall I'm tired of watching my business fall I'm seeing I'm seeing the Lord who has arranged this is not just about business this is about an order of wealth an order of financial blessing that the two lift gate be opened out of their own volition step into a heritage and inheritance Houses you did not build. The blessing of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray and release this blessing. For I also got it by impartation. And the Lord gave it to us as a ministry. Because we will be financing his end time agenda. Not to make, it, make noise for ourselves and to build empires. No. And with all my heart, 
and with every ounce of grace that God has given me I want to pray this prayer tonight can be for someone like it was for me in 2007 when from a regular meeting I stepped into grace the power to prosper where strangers will feed your flock it may not be for everybody but then for as many who can believe in life God will bring you to a point where you will pass through vessels that are the careers of the blessings you require you have struggled enough this is not about a man this is about an anointing it's called the power to prosper a force an ability therefore Lord I pray according to the order of grace that which you have given me like Moses he said I desire that this spirit will fall I'm about to pray for you right now and I pray I release upon you right now upon you the power to prosper receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it everywhere in this building receive it my father release it release it a distinguishing anointing the power to prosper let the light fall for you in pleasant places and that you have a good heritage houses you did not build increase I prophesy increase I prophesy increase I prophesy honor greatness wealth release it upon your people for their families an end comes to struggles this anointing will bring you out of debt i don't care how much you owe i don't care how much you owe let your business receive the power to prosper let your business receive the power to prosper i release that anointing upon your business every dying business hear ye the word of the lord arise 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 I speak to every dead finance. Arise in the name of Jesus. Over your ministry, over your family. I send this word to your parents. I command, arise, arise. Arise. Thou shall not be poor. Thou shall not be poor. I cause poverty. I cause poverty. Pareka pareke te, rendo so seke, ekorieke pa, ra pareke tosa. I cause lack. I cause poverty. Go, go. You are free from every cause of poverty enter into wealth enter into wealth i release you prophetically enter into wealth i release you i release you i release you receive ideas receive business ideas receive concepts receive insight let the works of your hands prosper Prosper, prosper, go and prosper, go and flourish. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that giveth thee power, power to get well. 
thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For when God takes a hold of your heart, there is nothing he cannot give you. Hallelujah. For when God takes a hold of your heart, there is nothing he cannot give you. For when God takes a hold of your heart, my brothers and my sisters, there is nothing. There is no debt he cannot take you out of. He created the heavens and the earth. In seven days, it will not cause God that much to change your story. For a while, stop thinking about business and think about God. Stop thinking about business. Stop thinking about capital and think about God. Stop thinking about your age. Stop thinking about your gender. Stop thinking about your background. Stop asking unreasonable questions. Say, Lord, I trust you that you can open a door. Bro, Revelation chapter 3 verse 8. It says, I set before you a door. No man can shut it. I set before you an open door. No man can shut it. I set before you an open door. 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 Hallelujah. Part of the things that the Lord is beginning to reveal to me about next year is that as a family of faith we are going to step into fearful and uncommon dimensions of financial prosperity that's why God is preparing us like this that people will see your light hallelujah we are rounding up this series next Friday will be our last service for the year I want you to package a seed my brothers look at me if you do not believe in what we are doing please keep it are you listening to me we are not after your money God sees my heart I am a blessed man let me tell you the truth I am a blessed man I like you to package a seed hallelujah package a seed in your hand if you do not have a seed honestly connect with someone don't put yourself under pressure God sees the sincerity of your heart you can connect with someone hold hands with your brother hold hands with his sister when a serious business here tonight Lord I pray that as a family of faith you will bring us into this heritage you brought Abraham let it not be a few people oh God let it be known among us that the prosperous one lives here grant us grace for the sake of your kingdom grant us grace that we may have the resources for evangelism that we may have the resources to sponsor bibles and to send to people that we may have the resources to partner with other ministries that we may have the resources to make life comfortable for your people this is our sincere desire as a family of faith we do not seek for ourselves oh god we do not just seek for us to walk in prosperity for the fun of it but Lord, we desire this prosperity that your kingdom will advance. I'd like you to lift up this seed as a sign unto God. My Father, we lift this seed from our hearts. We pray that you accept this seed, O oh God. And Lord, I am asking by the power of the Holy Spirit that as we cast this seed, like you did for me, oh God, in 2007. Let many people enter wealth tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That every area of your finances that you have struggled and cried with. As surely as the Lord lives. That it ends once and for all tonight. Phone calls from uncles that have, for have forgotten you. Strangers many of you who do not receive any support from your families watch and see the power to prosper activated in your life 
Hallelujah. I know that we are taking some time tonight, but friends, I'd like us to stay and let God solve this thing in your life once and for all. From today, I want you to walk with the consciousness that you carry this power to prosper. Let it speak for you everywhere you go. On your job, let it speak for you. Your business, in ministry, in your life and your family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I pray that we will truly step into the fullness of these blessings. Ushers, please take the offering basket. As you drop it, please begin to pray in the Spirit very quickly. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain